Hey guys, welcome to Travel with Danny Dub. Well, listen, Deb, I cannot believe being an airplane geek that I am. I've never been to the Oshkosh Air Show. Well, Dan, you are an airplane geek, but I have to say, after attending this year's air show, I think I'm becoming one too. Well, that's good. Now, listen, before we get into our personal experience at the Oshkosh Air Show, why don't you tell everybody about the event? Well, Dan, the first EAA fly in was held way back in September of 1953 at what is now Timmerman Field as a small part of the Milwaukee Air Pageant. Back then, there were only like about 150 people who visited the first year and there was only a handful of airplanes that attended the event. Back in 1959, the EAA fly-in grew too large for the air pageant and it had to move to Rockford, Illinois. In 1970, it outgrew again and had to move to Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And with the magic of editing, here we are outside the airplane. Listen, Deb, what does EAA stand for? Well, Dan, EAA stands for Experimental Aircraft Association. And you know, a lot of people always assumed EAA, Experimental Aircraft Association, meant there were little experimental planes, and maybe it started out that way. Air Venture is no small event, is it? Oh gosh, no, Dan, it's huge. This year there were over 650,000 people in attendance, and that's up over 7% from 2021. That is so crazy. Think about this, Deb. That's like the entire population of, of Minneapolis mm -hmm. and St. Paul all attending this air show. Right, and you think that's impressive. Here's a few more stats. There were more than 10,000 airplanes that arrived at Whitman Regional Airport and other nearby airports. At Whitman alone, there were 18,684 aircraft operations in the 11 day period, which is an average of approximately 121 takeoffs and landings per hour. Whitman Regional Airport is listed as the busiest airport in the world. And of course, this is due to the Air Venture event. Before we get into more of our personal experience at the air mm -hmm. show, um, why don't you tell everybody how we actually set up the trip? Okay, well, we chose to become members of the EAA, and I would highly recommend this to anyone attending the event. You don't have to be a pilot or an aviation enthusiast, but we found that having the membership would give us discounts on many things, including discounted rates to Air Venture Oshkosh, access to Warbirds, IAC, and vintage aviation communities. And this is great. You can also use your EAA membership card to visit nearly 400 museum and science centers worldwide free of charge. Plus, you also get a free subscription to Sport Aviation Magazine. Well, Deb, that's an incredible deal. I mean, think about it. Uh, it might even be worth just getting the EAA membership, even if you don't go to the Oshkosh Air Show. I mean, 400 museums, the magazine, and all those other perks. Right, Dan, absolutely. Yeah, well, how much is a membership, by the way? Well, they're not bad. They're only $48 a person, and so basically like 100 bucks for the two of us. Well, that's incredible. Well, let's get back into setting up our trip, because I know a lot of people out there may want to go, and they're like, uh, how do we do this? After we bought our EAA, AA membership, we went online and we purchased our wristbands and our campsite. Well, listen, everybody, we did camp, and I'll be honest with you, when I learned there were going to be 40,000 campers, I wasn't sure I wanted to do this, and I'll tell you why. The first vision I had was Woodstock of 1969. <laughs> if you ever seen the pictures, it's like, no, you don't want to go camping at Woodstock. <laughs> no. But Oshkosh was not Woodstock, was it? No, absolutely not. According to all the wonderful planning and organization of EAA, things went great. When you first get there, just follow the signs to the check-in and the camping area, and you're gonna be met by some wonderful volunteers. And these volunteers were great. They were well-informed and they guided us perfectly so that we understood how everything works in the camping area. Now our campsite, uh, let's talk about that. I was getting a little nervous. I didn't think we were gonna find a spot. Uh -huh. If you go, don't give up. You just keep heading further back and they keep opening up sections. Yeah. So we did finally find a beautiful little campsite, right? Yes, we did. It was great. Yeah, now the problem is we put up a tent that we just bought and we never set it up before. So I'm sure if you go on YouTube and look up crazy couple trying to set up a tent, that'd be us. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, campsite, tell us what's in the campsites. There's porta potties everywhere. So there's always access to a restroom facility and they're super clean, really pretty nice for a porta potty and always stocked with hand sanitizers so that was great and they have um, interspersed within the campground different shower buildings 
where you can go take a hot shower. Uh, they have charging stations mm -hmm. and you can go charge your devices there. And they also have a couple of little markets where you can go get ice and oh, yeah. coffee in the morning and you know pick up any supplies you might need. Well, let's uh, not forget, if you do come in a uh, tent, do not camp next to a motorhome that might have a generator. Right, they they actually have special areas for motorhomes with generators, but I did see some in the general the general vicinity as well. So just be yeah. aware of that. Yeah, you'd be tortured all night mm -hmm. long with you know, yeah. thing going on. Yeah. Now the bus system, Deb, was absolutely amazing. Yeah, it was great. Um, we would just have to walk to the main main street so to speak in the campground and they would come by what every 10-15 minutes and you just hop on and it'll take you right to the entrance to the air show. Well when the bus dropped us off and I looked up and I saw an event area that was probably way bigger than the state fair of Minnesota mm -hmm. or or Texas it was incredible. Yeah it was huge and you walk through the gates and just the reminder, you can't bring in any outside beverages into the air venture. Um, they will make you leave your cooler at yes, the gate. Yes. Um, but aside from that, when you walk in, there's hangers that are set up with, with exhibits and there's classes and forums and all sorts of wonderful educational opportunities. The Warbirds were great. You had World War II, um, not only the planes, but they had a reenactment village from World War II, an army village. Yeah, it was great. That was fun going through that. Mm -hmm. Then the next stop, we stopped at the Nassau building with this creepy little robotic dog. Yeah, that was, thing was creepy. He was cool, but he didn't have a head. It's like NASA, even if it's a, a head of a, a deer or something, just something. Something, yeah. but uh, that was a creepy thing. Yeah, but it was, but it was super cool too. It was cool. Mm -hmm. Then we went to uh, Women in Aviation. Yeah, that was amazing. Of course, we had to stop by AOPA, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Mark Baker and the gang from AOPA, they're amazing at that uh, location. Yep. And then we um, went to the center area where there were some huge aircraft set up in there that you could tour. Yeah, you can go inside the planes, you can go outside the planes. We were on helicopters, we were on transport planes. Uh, they had an Airbus 321 sitting there on the tarmac that you could actually go inside or just walk around underneath mm -hmm. it. Well, I can see it's starting to rain. I'm glad we came in this hangar, Deb. Yeah, me too. Well, we can't forget about our friend Karen. She is an amazing woman. She's a captain of the Airbus A330 for Delta. And Karen was in the show, wasn't she? Yes, she was. What did she do? Well, she took off from, and it was at the beginning of the show that we were at. Mm -hmm. um, the shows actually go from two to six every day. Was she in a little airplane? Uh, no, she was in a big airplane. Tell us about the airplane, Dan. Okay, this is my cup of tea. Yeah. It was an Airbus A330. She took off, she flew, and did a first pass pretty low. It was, I'm going to guess maybe 800 feet. Yeah, she came around the second time and she, I don't know, she, she was lower the second time, right? I would say 500, but... Yeah, so she flew over the runway, but it, she was low enough where we could see the Delta logo on the bottom of the airplane. Yeah, that, so that was, was amazing. Cool. So Dan, can you tell us about some of the different planes we saw at the air shows? Oh, you bet again. Oh man, where do I start? Uh, my favorite was probably the U-2 spy plane and the Raptor. Uh, there, let's talk about the Raptor, that thing. I want to say he did a pass pretty close to 700 miles an hour, you know, somewhere up there. Uh, afterburners on, um, and it just rattles your soul, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it did. Uh, the U-2 spy plane uh, did two passes, and then he just punched it, and I couldn't believe a plane that big could climb at that angle. Uh, the Red Bull, remember the Red yeah. Bull helicopter team? Yeah. That looks amazing. I've never seen a helicopter do barrel rolls or straight up uh, tail drops and uh, um, loop to loops. It was, that mm -hmm. was totally insane. Yeah, that was crazy. Uh, the old military flybys mm -hmm. of some of the old planes. Uh, we've seen uh, Corsairs, we've seen bombers from World War II mm -hmm. coming over. But I think the favorite, Deb, and I'm going to have you talk about this, was the nighttime air show combo oh. fireworks. That was really cool. So on two of the nights at the air show, I think it's Wednesday and Friday night, you double check on that, but they have a nighttime air show 
that include fireworks and pyrotechnics. So we saw planes flying in and out of fireworks and all sorts of just crazy stuff going on. But it was so beautiful and it was so much fun. It was a lot of fun. And from our angle, it looks like they were going through the fireworks. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the FAA, they were not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but some of the planes were launching fireworks. Yeah, off their wings, I think. Off their yeah, wings. Was that crazy. was amazing. Yeah, super then, cool. Then remember that creepy hovering thing? Looked oh, like a UFO. Yeah, that was weird. I, I don't know. Do you know what that was? Well, it was kind of, think of a drone, but a big drone with a person in it. Oh, yeah. And it was just silent. It just moved around with no noise. That was incredible. Yeah. But we should give our viewers just a few, just little tiny hints or tips. Like, make sure you bring plenty of sunscreen. Oh, yeah. Bring a hat. Bring an umbrella. That works good for shade when you're watching the air camping show. Camping chairs. Yeah, and bring camping chairs so that you have something to sit on. Um, there is no shade no. when you're running around. There. Well, a few spots, but there's like very 80 rare. people trying to get under one yeah, tree. Yeah, and when the sun's out, it's very hot. But, you know, just come prepared for that and you'll be just fine. Um, there's places to eat all mm. over the place. Um, yep. We did find a nice place that was close by the runways with umbrellas. So we went and, there a couple times. And beer. And beer, yeah, they don't serve any alcohol at Oshkosh Air Show before five o'clock, and then it's just beer and wine. Yeah, and that's so, a, that, that's good because yeah. this is a family event, uh, yeah. kids everywhere. You don't want a bunch of staggering drunks around airplanes. No, so that's just a few little hints and tips that yeah. might help you if you go. Yeah, well, listen, Deb, I don't think anybody would be disappointed going to the Oshkosh Air Show. No, nope, not at all. It it was a fantastic time. We saw so many cool airplanes and made new friends and just had a fantastic time. Exactly. Well, listen, check out the Oshkosh Hair Show. We're going to put a little link below. Make sure you go there for next year mm -hmm. and start booking right now because it's going to fill up fast. Yeah. Well, listen, so long from Travel with Danny Depp. We'll see you next time. Bye.